Good evening and welcome back to QTV. Now, QTV is Queensland's only GLBTIQ television program. My name is Michael James. I'm Kate Mackey. And I'm Matthew Bow. Yes, that's right. Matthew is back. Yay! You've been gone for I'm like back. six or eight weeks. It's I think been it's a long been time. nine now with our, with our break. Which yes. Is yeah. Good well, to be refreshed and back. As you know, I had to recover from the jet lag, so it's very kind of you to wait for me. So. Oh, it's <laughs> a hard life as a traveller. <laughs> it is. Yes. Yeah, so well, I hope you haven't missed us too much. Uh, as everyone would have noticed, we've been gone for uh, two whole weeks. So we've had a little bit of a creative break. It allowed mm. you to get in, get rested and get sorted and <laughs> come back with our new look team. So exactly what, a, what a fantastic right. team it is. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's a strange now, two weeks not being on the couch. It's <laughs> very weird. Um, but uh, speaking of our team, our team's going to change tonight. We're going to be catching up with an interview that we did a few weeks ago while you we were away tonight uh, with the very special guest, Mr Adam Richard. Now, Adam Richard has spent nine years as part of Melbourne's uh, number one FM breakfast team, the Matt and Joe Show, and he's known as the fabulous Adam Richard. Now, you might be thinking, who is he? But he's done a few different things, including Can of Worms, Chelsea Lately, Rove and Spicks and Specks, which he's known for his Australian Idol audition. So we'll be catching up with him later, but first, uh, on to the news. Now, as host of the 2014 Olympics in Sochi this coming February, uh, Russia will open its arms to visitors from around the world, so long as they're not gay, lesbian, bisexual or transgender. <laughs> LGBT rights organisations have warned that LGBT athletes and spectators would not be safe in Russia after the anti-gay propaganda that was established last month. Now, this actually goes totally against what is known as the seven fundamental principles mm. of Olympism. So principle number six actually states any discrimination um, against a country or person with regard to race, religion, politics, gender or otherwise is incompatible to the Olympic movement. And with just people in general, I think it's just <laughs> horrible. And I mean, th those laws have sparked a whole lot of debate around a whole lot of things mm. in the last couple of weeks. I mean, you've just been overseas when some of this stuff has started mm. happening. Uh, was, has there been much of a reaction in, in Europe and I around travel warnings and things? At the moment, it's, it's everywhere. It's, I, I would never have expected that Paris would be the way it was with all of the protests and things. I thought it was a very liberal area. So it was just, um, there seems to be a lot of it going on at the moment with the the world is changing and um, the Olympics is supposed to be about bringing the world together exactly. and forming a global community. And Friendship and in the name <laughs> of sport and all that kind of thing. I mean, they have the IOC has addressed um, mm. the recent anti-gay climate and they have assured the athletes, fans and media that there will be not be any issues regarding what takes place during the Games. Mm -hmm. But sticking um, with Russia, I've got a little bit more news. Um, we've all seen plenty of anti-gay sentiments um, in the headlines and social media this week. So an LGBT rights group focusing on Eastern Europe claims that campaigns launched by a Russian ultra-nationalist Maxim Matsinkovich to allegedly report pedophiles may actually be to target male teens who respond to same-sex ads on one of Russia's famous social networking sites, vk.com. So group members are said to be meeting the boys who show up for the supposed dates. They're bullying them, bullying them and in some cases torturing them all while recording the encounters on camera. So mm. it's pretty um, pretty appalling. I've seen a lot on my Facebook feed mm. this week oh, about it's this. It's just revolting. It's, mm. it's just one of the many millions of awful things that are coming out of Russia at the moment. Mm. And yeah, they're posting these videos online of them torturing these kids that are just being lured in like animals into a trap. It's disgusting. I, and it's saying like a lot of um, the people that have been caught on these, you know, camera, um, you know, these filmed scenes, which are actually then going all across social social media and sort of, in a sense, outing a lot of people, are also driving a lot of the victims to suicide mm. and deep traumatization, which you can only imagine mm. um, with what some of them are being put through. And can you imagine a climate so something like that happening here in Australia, where someone was being tortured, it was put on YouTube or something? People wouldn't be watching that. So, what is wrong with the, the climate or the culture that's going on that that these guys are getting away with? This? They've got their faces and things visible. They're they're showing absolutely no shame, and they feel like they're heroes. They're talking about how uh, if if someone's gay 
that means they like boys, which means they're going to turn into a pedophile. I mean, where are they getting this from? It's, oh, mm. it's, it's absolutely disgusting, Matt. Yeah. Anyway, back to home. Uh, last Friday, a parliamentary committee found it was constitutionally valid for New South Wales to legislate same-sex marriage. Uh, the report put to rest arguments that federal parliament has sole responsibility for marriage equality laws. And, and uh, New South Wales looks set to be the first Australian state to make the move, uh, with their state MPs having previously voiced support for same-sex marriage. So this is very exciting. This because, is positive yeah. news. It's awesome. Oh. Yeah. For so long they've said that every, every time you talk to a local member or a state member, they've said, look, there's nothing we can do about it. You have to lobby your federal MPs. This is putting the onus back on them as just like it should be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really good and it, it's progressive and it's great to hear, but it, it's one of how many states that we've heard saying that, you know, mm. we, oh, we can do it state by state at the moment, mm. but we shouldn't have to mm. like it's it's driving me mad that we're trying to find loopholes to, <laughs> to get marriage equality passed like we have a current sitting prime minister who supports it like all he has to do is <laughs> support it <laughs> yes well one um mp oh. mr o'farrell new south wales mp he has said himself he would prefer the federal parliament to change mm. the marriage act but he has pledged that he's going to go out alone if um if the inquiry finds that the state can act by itself and you know i think that's you know, a great stance to make. He, he is saying exactly mm. what we all agree. It should be just a federal issue, but at least he's prepared to put New South Wales, you know, out there. and Yeah, you know, and that is the upside to this point. If they can do it state by state, there's a lot of people that are individually in, in state-held seats around mm. the country from all different parties that have been putting their hands up and saying, we do support it, irrespective of our party's views and all those mm. sorts of things. So there was, uh, was it Sue Boyce was the uh, federal senator for the LNP who crossed the floor mm. when it came to yeah, voting on the Yeah, we mentioned her a couple of weeks ago, yeah, I think. There's from her. South Australia, maybe? Yeah, like, I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, and you've got other state MPs, you've got, you know, we spoke to Rob Cavallucci mm. here, um, and he said that he supported it, supports it as well. Um, there's <laughs> been one, I think it was an LNP member in Melbourne mm -hmm. who supports it. Um, you know, it <laughs> Barry O'Farrell's the Premier, so, I mean, yeah, that's all we need to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, if there's anything else that you think that we should need to know and discuss, please make sure that you jump online and let us know any stories, local, nationally or internationally. You can do that uh, via Twitter or Facebook, both of those at QTV Brisbane, or you can shoot us an email to uh, QTV at 31.com.au. Now, uh, just after this very short break, you're going to come back and catch the interview with Kate, myself, and Spencer with the fabulous Adam Richard. We'll be right back. Welcome back to QTV. Now, as promised before the break, uh, we're going to take you to our interview that we had with Melbourne comedian Adam Richard while Matt was away. So in a moment, you're going to see Matt transform into Spencer and Kate and I are going to undergo a quick costume change as we jump back to our interview with Adam Richard. We hope you enjoy. Welcome back to QTV. Now we have another very special guest with us tonight. Uh, we have Adam Richard. Hi. Hi. And congratulations, this is probably the first time he's introduced a guest without mentioning the F word. So I know, you did so good. I well done. I have to use the F word because to use appropriate titles, this is the fabulous yep. Adam Richard, uh, Melbourne breakfast radio host, yep. star of ABC's Outland. And also uh, that was your creative genius as well, wasn't it? I did write some of it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, also known for your very interesting stint on Celebrity Splash. Oh well, there was fourteen celebrities on Celebrity Splash. We can't we can't all be celebrities. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they had Lisa Jones and Denise Drysdale and Andrew Simons, and then you know. Once you've kept five celebrities, you just go, oh, and some other people. How did they find you? Was it your agent calling you saying, I've got this great gig for you? Or did you hear about it and you're like, please, I want to be part of this? Desperate or how did it happen? Just put on lycra. Hop a 10 metre tower into water. As you do, ever since I was a little boy. I know. Uh, no, I, uh, I got concussion <laughs> from the three metre platform. Okay. It's not even a competition platform. You can't win a medal from three metres. It's so low. And I, um, yeah, I hit the water at a funny angle. So what kind of training and preparation did you have to do for Celebrity Splash? Six weeks. Six weeks. With Olympic divers. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I, I, my trainer was uh, Ludie Wiggins, mm-hmm. who has been to four Olympics. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, she, uh, I think she got bronze or silver at, um, in Sydney. So, because at one point, like, we filmed the, we did all the training in Melbourne, and then we filmed in Sydney, like, the live shows are in Sydney. And I was up on the tower, and it feels... Like, because the stadium is so much bigger in Sydney, it felt like it wasn't so high when I was up on the five-metre tower. And I was like, Lady, have you been up here? It's not very high. She goes, yeah, I want a medal up there. <laughs> I'm like, good on you. I'm in today. <laughs> so, yeah. so, talking about, um, we talked about Outland just a moment ago mm. in the intro. Um, I was interested to know um, how that came about for you. Have you always been a sci-fi fan? Mm-hmm. Um, was that a secret love of yours? It, it, it is a secret love. Um, yeah, I, like the whole idea behind the show was that it was a show about people who are openly gay but in the closet about something else yeah, to try yeah. and sort of point out that we're all in the closet about something. We all have something we sort of secretly hide. Okay. And they were all closeted sci-fi fans to one degree or another. Uh, is, so thinking of all these like closet aspects, is it something that you had to make up or do you have to resort to real life going, oh, actually, this is what I don't like and so this is what I'm going to write into the script because uh, and be no, closeted? Like, it was just a, like, we were, uh, my friend John and I who, who wrote it together, he said, you know, what, what ideas have you got for TV shows? And we were going through these really complex and convoluted ideas. And then I went, oh, what about a gay science fiction club? <laughs> and just the idea of it is ridiculous. Like, I don't know if you've been to a gay pride march and seen the people in the sci-fi club. There's usually like four of them. Yeah. And they all dress like Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. It's quite it's, sad. Yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious, though. I, and I loved it. Now, I loved your character. You were fab. Fab, yeah, short for fabulous. <laughs> and he was an utter bitch. Well, Where yes. did he come from? Who was he moulded off something? That's that's the, that's drunk me. Nah. <laughs> John would often write when Fab is being particularly heinous. I'm like, oh, yeah, that must have been my day. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> Some of his behaviour was my own. That Actually. sounds like a great job. We need we need to write an episode. Okay, let me just get heavily, you know, pissed at the moment, and we'll get some material. I yeah. generally I tend to be drunk most days. I'm okay. drunk now. You're drunk. I was I was waiting for that. <laughs> that that's that's vodka. Give, give the man some water. <laughs> there you go. So Adam, I'll let you have a sip. But um, obviously, a lot of <laughs> or a, slur, a lot of our viewers uh, might also know you from like Spicks and Specs, yes, a um, couple of other shows like that. Um, I'm proud to say that one of my closeted things mm. is celebrity gossip and reality TV. <laughs> so I knew you from when you would do your gossip sections um, on TV. So I'm just wondering how that sort of came about for Oh, you. well, I do gossip reports on the radio. Yep. So that's pretty much what I do. That's yes, why they call me currently. The fabulous <laughs> Adam Richard is because um, you can't say cock hungry bum slut on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Just on community TV. <laughs> I can say anything on community TV. No one can see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah. So I was already doing the gossip. So they, when they moved from Good Morning Australia to <laughs> Nine Am with David and Kim, yeah. they, yeah, they called me into, you know. Everyone loves a hit of their goals. Well, when it comes to the entertainment industry, I mean, like, your, your fingers and pies is, is probably a great way to describe you at the moment. I mean, can you... I'm going to Jason Biggs. Uh, well, you know, what, where, what, what, what's the goal? Where does one go from here? Like, what is it that you want to be doing? Is it comedian work or is it writing or is it radio work? Like, well, you know, I, mean, who, who are you? I, love, I love doing stand-up. Like, I love doing stand-up more than anything, but it's, um, unless you're Will Anderson or Josh Thomas, it's no way to pay the bills. Okay. So, you do all these other gigs to kind of, you know, keep doing live work. Like, I do a, a room in Melbourne with uh, Justin Hamilton, who's another comedian. We run this room called The Shelf, which is... We do it for like three weeks and then we have, we have like three months off and then we'll do another three weeks. So how many projects do you have running? About then? 42. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of like a fun it's night a where nothing. we get to do the kind of stuff on stage you don't get to normally do. Like we have like guests like Will Anderson. One night was like me and Justin and Will Anderson and Rove all on stage at the same time just being demented. And then we had to bring other acts on. I was like, oh, sorry, we should bring on <laughs> there the are other people, people here. <laughs> what, is this like improv here? Like, do you improvise it's, or do you just talk or, or how we, does it we work? We just chat, but, uh, okay. you know, other people come on and do stand-up. We'll have people doing sketches. We have people doing sketches in the audience. Like, it's what it's the best fun. So, but, yeah, you just, you can't make a living in this country all right, just so, doing stand-up. Are we, are we going to see you on The Voice anytime soon? Because... <laughs> 
<laughs> We've all seen you on that episode of Spicks and Specs where you did your Australian Idol audition. Mar- Mariah Carey impression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was love it. No, no, Christine Aguilera. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yes. Know your content, buddy. Essentially, I was In Mariah doing style. Mariah style. Oh, the right, gotcha. And apparently that's like one of the Spicks and Specs most um, downloaded. downloaded clips. Yeah, so. just, just ahead of Hamish Blake and Adam Hill's Pashing. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I do love the voice, though. Yeah. I love Ricky Martin. Do you know what? I think he's a perfect choice for the voice because Ricky is very good at judging talent that's going on behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold back. Know. Tell us how you really feel. We're going to take you into our quick six now and control Ooh, you a little okay. bit more. So Ooh, we're going to fire uh, six very quick questions at you. Okay. You're going to give us your first response. It, what if it's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Only Do you I know. lose points? No. There's, there's no right or oh, wrong. Okay. We so just judge and I write stuff about you on Facebook oh, saying that oh, Adam judgy, died. Judgy, judgy. Judgy, judgy. All right. It's what so, us gays do. To, uh, to kick it off, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to go with uh, if uh, which Harry Potter character uh, most resembles you? Oh, uh, Neville. Long oh. bottom. <laughs> Very long bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you turned out so hot by the, the last film, though. And uh, <laughs> Tim Tams or Ice Bobos? Tim Tams for the slam. Oh, of course. Mm. Um, I was going to go with a Mariah or Whitney. Oh, Mariah. Of course. Total Mariah. And Because uh, she's crazy. <laughs> a spick or a speck, I could say. Uh, oh, it depends whether you're being racist or not. Um, I oh. do wear spectacles. <laughs> 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 Didn't think that question through, did I? Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, uh, what's your favourite spirit? Um, probably bourbon. Bourbon? And uh, are you a Eurovision fan? Oh my god, yes! Yay! Hello! Okay. It's like the voice on, you know, steroids. Yeah, I, uh, I love it. Well, we could keep going all night. We could! But we have just bump the ads. Just take them off. Let's take the ads. Get rid of all the other segments. We'll just run the show for an hour. Yeah, cool. But, uh, thank you very, very much for joining Any us. Anytime, uh, darling. Now, if you want to hear more of this fabulous stuff with the fabulous Adam Richard, you can stalk him on Twitter and he'll talk to you sometimes. Yeah, um, I do. And otherwise, he just generally says funny stuff and you can laugh at it. Uh, <laughs> you can also catch all of us on Twitter as well. Tweet at QTV Brisbane. What's your Twitter handle? At Adam Richard. At Adam Richard. Easy. That's Richard, not Richard. No way. At Adam Singular, Richard. not plural. I know I take up enough room for two people, but there's just one of them. <laughs> anyway, thank you very, very much again for joining us. And uh, we'll be back with our next segment on QTV. Now, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Adam. I think he is absolutely freaking hysterical. He was so much fun. And didn't hang around actually that night to uh, yeah, do he came, some he Mr. Came Pride and, um, judging for you? Yeah, he judged <laughs> judged Mr. Pride, which was uh, wonderful. I spent like all night with him. I could have just talked to him for like two days. He was wonderful. He's so. quite active on the Twitter Thank too. Thank you, Adam. So. He, is, he is. loves yeah. his social media, so you can follow He's him He's a big there. tweeter, so uh, yeah, jump on and have a chat it to him. It was great fun just to hear about all the different projects and things he's, um, he's done over mm. the, the yeah. time. Now, speaking well, of big tweeting, <gasps> Mr. Matt... 
While you were in uh, Europe and in uh, Egypt and everywhere else, you were tweeting and Facebooking and telling us all about what was happening. So what did you do exactly, uh, aside from being scared in Egyptian <laughs> hotel rooms and hurt your feet and yeah. eat lots of food and be cranky in bars? What, what yeah, were you up that's to? pretty much it. I, you, you've summed it up. I <laughs> said, as a first-time traveller, I... Um, yeah, I, I didn't plan it wonderfully. I planned it like you would if you were, you know, running a race. Like I was, like the amazing race. So I was going to say the amazing yes, race. Yeah, pretty race. much. <laughs> Quick, get here, do this. Quick, go to the next place. So um, it was very busy. As you know, I started in in Sweden, which was quite an interesting start. And I um, you know, after like a, t- it was over two days to get from Brisbane to Sweden. And when I finally got to my accommodation in Stockholm, after arriving in Stockholm at like 11 o'clock at night and having to figure out where trains and things were, I got to this accommodation. I was tired. I hadn't showered in like two and a half days. I just wanted to go to bed. And I get out of the train and I'm like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm walking towards this house. Everything is shut. There's no food. There's no, there's no, all this, um, th- I found one supermarket and it was shut. And I'm walking to my accommodation and there's rubbish everywhere and it's like a tower. So it turned out it was someone's dorm room in a in a student in the university and so um he was a furniture furniture maker so everything was made by him so the bed and it was a, it was a guy so the fridge was full of rotting onions and, uh, were you, were you just on couch or beer? Or no i it was airbnb it was like a hundred dollars a night he'd, he'd somehow taken magical photos of making the room look cute it was a room it was like the size of these two couches with a shower um it was a futon, and instead of putting sheets on, he'd put three duna covers. I was starving. I was hungry. I was tired. Oh. Sweden, Stockholm was um, it was light until like three o'clock in the morning. Um, there was a train that went all through the night right outside my window. There were kids playing basketball outside from the university. It was, and there was no internet. So I'd finally arrived somewhere. <laughs> I had no internet. I had nothing. So I'm like, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm just going to take a sleeping pill and deal with this tomorrow. So, so, like so how many out of a stamps movie. did you get in the passports? So. I don't know. This is they quite... don't stamp much anymore. Actually, when I did they're my big funny. trip overseas, yeah. I was like, I want to fill this passport. Yeah. And because they're all got to ask. in the Euro. Oh, I've got to ask wherever I've been. I've had to ask to get it stamped. I got one oh. stamp and I was yeah. so disappointed. One? Oh, no, I got like... I reckon there was at least fifteen or so. I think, but there was um, it was yeah, there was millions of stamps going now, on. You did uh, Egypt, where we, yes. we talked about you being stuck in a hotel room, yes. and you also went to Italy. Yes, oh, Italy. Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rome was beautiful. And um, Italy has been very interesting. Mm. It has mm. been yeah. in the news today. As I actually drove here in the car, because I think it it broke very very recently. Mm. Um, the Pope, the current mm. Pope. I was getting confused because I thought the current Pope was um anti GLBTIQ everything mm. and then he's come out and his quote has been uh, it is not for me to judge gay people on mm. their lifestyle which apparently is is huge for a pope because they don't they've all, all the, the predecessors have been you know about burning in hell and blah 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 and and him saying that he's not there to judge is apparently a really big step forward did you get to go to the Vatican and stuff and see any I, I, got, I was in the area and there was so many the, the, the Rome people were wonderful and I was lucky to stay with a gay couple in Rome who, who you know told me about the situation and I think they were saying a lot of the older people in Rome are quite cool with it it's the younger generation that are quite conservative and are starting to rebel really? But, yeah um, that's absolutely bizarre and it's interesting with the Pope that he's really PR media washed us all because once again he said being gay is not wrong and we shouldn't judge gay people but the church's stance is still that acting on those gay feelings is wrong and sinful so you can be gay as long as you're celibate which hasn't changed much so <laughs> <laughs> oh, well yeah. I, it always continues to get interesting over there mm-hmm. so um, I'm sure we'll hear much more about it mm. uh, just hope things continue to get better for us here exactly <laughs> yep, who well, knows this is all we've got time for. Uh, very jam-packed episode, and it's great to have you back and have our Thank new you. Great to be back. <laughs> panel up and running and good to go. So uh, we'll be back next week with more QTV. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow all of us on our individual Twitter handles as well. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us. Have a very great night. I'm Michael James. I'm Kate Mackey. And I'm Matthew Bow. See you next week. Good night. So